Today we are going to discuss about design of pile caps. Lesson is concentrating on a pile cap having a two piles. Let's see how we can do the design of pile caps having a two piles. In this example, I have considered the pile diameter as 600 mm, pile spacing as 1500 mm, column size is 500 by 500 mm, ultimate load of the pile is as a 3000 kN. Let's see how to select the dimensions of the pile cap. So, so your pile cap will be like this. You have a two piles like this. Now, how we can select this spacing of these two piles? Generally, this spacing we maintain as 2.5 times pile diameter. And also, we always try to maintain it is less than 3.5. Because generally we use truss analogy to design pile caps. When you do, when you use the truss analogy, we have to have transfer the pile load to the piles via a compressive loads. We'll discuss these things when you continue when we continue this lesson. For time being, say that we generally consider pile cap spacing as 2.5 times pile diameter. And also, this clearance generally we maintain around 150 millimeters. Right? Either side, we generally maintain this spacing as 150 millimeters for construction requirement and generally as design requirement. Some people we have seen maintain this as a 100 millimeter. In my opinion, it is a bit closer because when you put the reinforcement, you should have a sufficient gap there to have a good concreting work because during construction there if, if this is very close there are there will be several reinforcement coming there may be two layers of reinforcement coming and those reinforcements need to be bent right your pile will be like this then the pile cap will be like this so your reinforcement will be coming like this if you have a very small gap there there will be any difficulty in providing the reinforcement therefore as a general law we maintain these guidelines. According to this, let's finalize the dimension of the pile cap. Let's find the dimension of the pile cap. So, in our example, let's see, consider this uh, as the 500, then will be easy for our calculations. So, so the file dimensions will be, file spacing will be 1500, then this half distance we have to consider, this is 250. There are two piles, 250 plus, we have 150, 150 there, then 150 into 2. So, the total distance will become 2300. Right. Then the pile length, we have pile length. Similarly, we can calculate the width of the pile also. So, the, our width of the pile will be like, you know, the... the you know the diameter of the pile that is 500 plus 150 in the two sides that is 300 then this will become 800 millimeter so now you know how to calculate the pile dimensions now in this example let's assume let's assume the height of the pile cap okay. say the uh, height of the pile cap as 900 millimeter then we know all the dimension of the pile cap right this pile cap this height is 900 millimeter so our dimensions are now with us let's see how we can do the rest of the calculations now when you do the pile cap designs you have a two method one method is the truss analogy your piles like this, your column will be like this. This method, when you trans, you can transfer load to the pile and to the ground like this. If you use this method, this method is called the truss methodology, truss analogy. Otherwise, you have to use the bending theory. Your pile cap like this, you have you can consider the bending effect. Then you can calculate the bending and you can calculate the reinforcement. In, in pile cap design, we consider the truss method and we maintain this gap in a way that this load transfer mechanism 
behave like a truss. So for to meet that, we have to maintain this angle. First, we calculate the effective depth of the file cap. Effective depth, we can calculate. We know the depth of the file cap, 900. Then we have to reduce the cover to the file cap. Say in this example, cover is 40 millimeter and the e bar diameter bottom reinforcement bar say we are going to provide 25 millimeter bars so the depth of pile cap become 847.5 millimeter so now let's see whether this angle is less or greater so what should be happen now 847.5 should be less than 1500 that is the spacing between two piles divided by 2 right this is 750 millimeter i think it's clear to you how we get that because now we can consider the triangle p depth and this is a constant this is 750 1000 divided by 2 this is one pile other pile will be somewhere here this is our triangle half of the triangle if this length greater this angle is higher so that concept is used there Right. Let's see simply what is the truss analogy. From the truss analogy, as I explained previously, also we can use to design the pile cap. So your column load will be there in, and here the reactions will be n by two. Reaction in the this side also similarly n by two. We know the distance between these two piles. Say this is two n that is to derive the equations the forces will be act like this act like this forces will be act like this and here the compression strut there so this is taken by the concrete compression and you know the n and you know the reaction and you have to find the reinforcement the reinforcement will be there the, this tension force so the tension force can be calculated from the equation 2n l divided by 2d this is a common equation everyone can use this equation to calculate the tension reinforced tensile stress tensile force once you know the tensile force you can find the tensile stress and the tensile reinforcement once you've done the tensile reinforcement then you can calculate the punching shear and the shear requirement and the minimum reinforcement requirement with that your work is done. Now let's calculate the tensile force. Tensile force is equals as we discuss 2n divided by 2d. Right now we have we know the pile axial load. What's the pile axial load? That is 300 3000 kilo newton and it's we have to multiply it by the 1500 divided by the 2 into diameter 847.5 right from this we can calculate the tensile force as 2655 kilonewton all those are in millimeter so force in kilonewton therefore the result will be kilonewton now how we can calculate the reinforcement area reinforcement area can be calculated as stress is equal force divided by allowable stress sorry a s equals a s equals force divided by the stress this is a simple equation that we can use now our force is we already know 2645 kilonewton so we have to convert this into newton and stress is what's the stress we have no we know the allowable stress of the reinforcement that is characteristic strength in this example we are going to consider as 460 newtons per millimeter square into the factor of safety 0.9 because 95 this is come from the core right in the core generally the force is divided by stress is 0.95 f5 this we have used the f5 there so this equation we can calculate the reinforcement area as 6075 millimeter square so this is equal 
eight numbers of t is thirty two. They have to provide eight numbers of thirty two millimeters bar there for the bending reinforcement reform. And also now the we don't want to use the truss analogy as I explained you previously as well. This the pile spacing is less than three five right. This is less than three five. Then we don't want to consider the bending action. The compression strut can carry the compressive force. So we, we don't want to apply bending theory because this we have we know the diameter. So so that from that we can get the one thousand five hundred. So our value is okay because pile is facing also one thousand five hundred. So it doesn't violate. Now let do some more calculation on the punching shear. Now we have calculated the reinforcement area. Now we have to find the punching shear reinforcement area. How do we can calculate the punching shear? In this example, we are doing the calculation based on the British standard, right? So you have to keep in mind that you may have a different standard, but you have to follow the concept. But the concept or the procedure may be different from standard to standard. So here we have to keep in mind we are following the British standard. For the British standard, when you do the punching shear or the vertical line shear, actually now we are going to check the vertical line shear. In the vertical line shear, you can enhance the shear capacity. For that, we have to calculate the AV. What is this AV? Let's see how we can calculate the AV. Now we have a pile like this. Now you have a column like this. So the your, your pile will be like this. I will take one side and according to the British standard this vertical line shear perimeter should be calculated as this distance we have to calculate it as 20% of pile diameter. This is given in the British standard so according to this this distance has to be considered as 20% of the pile diameter right so our pile diameter is what's the pile diameter 500 divided by 1000 right first this this is 100 millimeter right that we have to consider now let's calculate the AV for the pile design that's AV is this distance pile face to vertical line shear perimeter this distance we have to calculate that is the length to the vertical line shear perimeter the spacing within piles is 1500 then half length will be 750 minus now we have calculated the this this distance that is 100 millimeter minus now our column size is 200 500 then this is a 250 okay now we can calculate this distance as 400 millimeter right now i think it's clear to you how to calculate this length so we have we know now method of calculating the av so this this is given in the standard and also you can refer the clause 11.4.3 in the British standard for further information on this calculation now let's see how we can calculate the shear stress now shear stress is equal shear force divided by the you know area or stress area subject to, subject to the shear right so the force we have a 3000 kilonewton in the column load so one side we have a 1500 kilonewton so you have to multiply it by 10 to the power t then divided by say consider per meters width section then it will be easy and our d is 4847.5 from this we can calculate the shear stress as 1.78 newtons per millimeter square now we know the shear stress now we have to calculate the shear capacity 
from the standard or from table 3.8 of BS 8110 we can calculate the VC right VC you can calculate from the table 3.8 of the BS 8110 from that approximately let's see we found the VC as 0.75 newtons per millimeter square right according to the British standard we can enhance you now if you consider this norm we can enhance the CA stress by 2d divided by AV so we have to calculate this one 2d into 2 into d is 8 847.5 so we our AV is we have already calculated 400 from this calculation we can find the this value as 5.3 so we know 2d AV so we can enhance the enhance here capacity we can calculate as point we see our cv 75 into 5.3 from this we can get the enhanced air capacity at 3.98 newtons per millimeter square so vc is 3.98 newtons per millimeter square now the our v ca stress is 1.78 then we have don't have issue shear capacity is greater than shear stress in addition to this that means now we don't want to provide the shear leaks right in addition to this we have to check the distribution reinforcement a is distribution so we have to provide a distribution reinforcement as 100 a s over a c equals 0.13 so here the a c you can consider as the section b that is if you have a dimension of the section so we know the cross section of the file and all that and the, all the details are there so you can calculate that from this AS distribution reinforcement area in addition to that we are providing 25 percent of the horizontal binders because in a pile cap you have to provide the horizontal binders your pile cap will be like this so your rain, longitudinal reinforcement will be providing like this right we may provide the top reinforcement as well but we have to provide the horizontal binders like this this is a code we generally provide 25 percent of a s this you have to keep in mind and horizontal binders you can calculate since a is known you can calculate the 25 percent of the area and provide the horizontal binders they are generally provided in the form of u o links now if you little discuss little bit about the uh, if you did discuss a little bit about the reinforcement arrangement bottom reinforcement mostly you provide like this generally sometimes you provide the top reinforcement as well for controlling crack this there's no requirement for the top reinforcement but you generally provide that in addition to that the, you have to have the binders you can provide binder like this two u bars may be provided like this so the horizontal binder will be like this horizontal one vertical one also you can follow the same procedure and to you bars you can provide like this you have to maintain the left length or the anchor length as required there with that we end the today discussion on design of pile caps today we discuss about the design of the pile cap having two piles in Coming lessons, we'll see how we can design the pile cap with three piles and etc. So let's meet again from the video. Thank you very much for watching our videos.